Hey, what's up, nerds? Paul at Radio Free Hammer Hall, and today we are going to take a deep dive into what is in the General's Handbook. The General's Handbook now has been around for five different installments. We're at the fifth anniversary of Age of Sigmar. We just got our fifth installment of the General's Handbook with some pretty awesome things in it. So I wanted to, along with the fifth anniversary of Age of Sigmar, do a little bit of a retrospective on the General's Handbook, what is actually in there, and kind of do this from an analytical perspective. Um, and it was definitely an eye-opening experience for me. I definitely opened to some pages of the General's Handbook that I had never even looked at before uh, to make this video. And um, it really has expanded my mind on some ways to play Age of Sigmar that I wasn't really thinking about before. So, it's been around now, well, technically for about four years, but we have our fifth General's Handbook. It is generally broken up into open play, narrative play, and matched play. We also have a section called Conquest Unbound that nobody ever really talks about. In the first couple of general handbooks, it was Forces of the Realms. We get in here supplemental rules for things like match play, different open and narrative play game modes, uh, multiplayer options. We get new battle plans. Uh, the big thing that originally came with this was points. Um, and one of the cooler, newer additions is sample tournament packs and event packs to help people plan events. So that's sort of the top-level overview of what's in these books. One of the first things that I really want to key in on is that we're given this three ways to play, and they always forget to mention that there's this fourth section of the book that is not fitting into these three buckets. And it's usually pretty large. Um, and we're going to talk more about Conquest Unbound and what that does for the game. And I'm not even sure what it means anymore. <laughs> so let's dive into the details. So the main way that I was analyzing how these books were comprised was looking at how many pages are dedicated to different things. So over the course of the five generals handbooks, we have ranged from 137 pages to 169 pages. And we've had a total of 772 pages published of generals handbook. Now, in 2019 and 2020, we had a supplemental pitch battle profile pamphlet that got attached to that, uh, and I did roll that into that total page number, uh, since it, just for consistency's sake, that was really included in the previous three General's Handbooks in the body of the book, so I wanted to make sure that that stayed consistent for analysis purposes and that was included in the match play section as well. Overall, we can see, I wanted to break out that, like, there's always just, like, an intro. That's not really anything. There's, like, the player's code or something like that, and a table of contents and some art and all of those things at the beginning of the book. Over time, we can look and see that... Uh, Proportionate time or proportionate page numbers are not given to these different sections. You know, on average, we've had 14% allocated to open play at the lowest amount, 24% for narrative play, 38% for match play, 20% for conquest unbound. Now, Within those things, this is varied quite a bit over time. Open play 
has been pretty consistently the smallest section of the book. However, there have been um, a couple of instances where narrative play got even less attention than uh, open play did. In 2017, we had two less pages of narrative play than open play, and in our most recent General's Handbook, we had 38 pages of open play versus 24 pages of narrative play. But it should definitely be noted that about 20 pages of open play was dedicated to sky battles. So it was almost like an entire mini game was included in there. In our really high number for narrative play in the first General's Handbook, uh, 76 pages, 45% of the book. That was in large part due to Path to Glory being included in there. That was one of the big features of that particular book. And that was later broken out into its own publication. And then in, going forward, uh, Path to Glory tables for each new army were included in their battle tomes. Um, Conquest Unbound, that typically was housing our allegiance abilities um, and our extra battalions that we got along with uh, some of these General's Handbooks. And in the more recent iterations of those, as the Allegiance abilities have been getting phased out of the book and now are out of the book entirely. Uh, that's been replaced mostly by um, tournament pack examples and event pack examples. But we had in 2017 and 2018 a massive amount of the book, 30% and 36% respectively, devoted to to Conquest Unbound. And that was really including all of those allegiance abilities and battalion extras in there to sort of fill out the game. And one of the big elements that inflates the numbers for match play is really that that's where all the points are. Um, in the most recent two generals handbooks, 35 pages were points. And that constitutes about half of the match play section, which in both of those cases, that means it's constituting about a quarter of the entire book is just points values. Um, so we can really see some interesting trends here on like what's been included in the General's Handbook, uh, where things sort of went up and down. Narrative play had this huge hit in 2016. There was tons and tons and tons of narrative play stuff. We got 76 pages of narrative play. And after that, we got 30, 30, 28, 24. Arguably, the quality of the stuff that we've gotten in narrative play has gone up. But um, because, you know, the, in the most recent iteration, we got Anvil of Apotheosis, and that's just amazing. You know, 2017, 2018, huge chunks of the book were being devoted to allegiance abilities and points. Um... In 2016, just having points was like the revelation for match play existing. Um, open play, historically, has been this thing that got very little attention. And I think that's sort of like by its nature, that there's not a lot you can really do with open play because it's, it's the do-whatever-you-feel-like format. And it's just sort of giving you some suggestions and ideas of ways to organize a game that aren't narrative or match play. It's sort of the other bucket. So 
um, hopefully the uh, sky battles that we got in and I don't think that's actually the name I, it, the real name's escaping me for the moment uh, hopefully that's an indication of things to come for open play that we'll be getting more interesting things like that going forward but uh, historically we've gotten very little love in the match play section or in the open play section um, and we're going to see later on um, even more analysis and breakdown of what um, kind of uh, picking these sections apart a little bit more. So the big thing that I wanted to look at here was um, the first section is what is really comprising competitive play in Age of Sigmar. So that is our match play rules, and I was not including meeting engagements in there. Um, our pitch battle profiles, our allegiance abilities, and our match play battle plans. And as we can see here, about in the first general's handbook about 30 percent of the book was devoted to competitive play for the next three years it was more than half the book was devoted to competitive play and now in 2020 we're back down to 32 percent which is interesting a big chunk of that is that the allegiance abilities and extra battalions used to all live in this competitive play section. Um, and those are all in battle tomes now. We have a complete set of battle tomes, so we have no need to publish those elements of battle tomes as like a patch in the General's Handbook. We still have are pitch battle profiles that are taking up a decent percentage of the book uh, on the most recent two generals handbooks um, they took up 35 pages each um, and our battle plans over time we originally started with six and now we're at 12 for match play um, and those each take one page each the match play rules actually got simplified um after the edition change uh in 2018 we saw the um a lot of the rules that were in the match play section got incorporated into the core rules so we don't really have um that much to put into match play rules anymore um, and it was never really that big of a section to begin with but what's really interesting here is just how much of this book at its lowest it's about a third of the book is devoted to competitive play um, now compared to you know some other things that have been included in the general's handbook multiplayer um was the big focus in general's handbook 2020 um and it appears to have also been a pretty big focus in 2017 it had 26 pages devoted to it um however in 2019 there was zero multiplayer content um so really interesting uh i think multiplayer is one of those things that has some people that are really devoted to it and and everybody else basically doesn't play it um there's a few you know doubles tournaments uh team tournaments and things like that but multiplayer formats are not something that is really catered to and i'm really glad to see that games workshop um really addressed that in the most gen recent general's handbook and really spent a lot of time on multiplayer so that we had a more play-tested and structured 
multiplayer environment so it was more accessible to more people uh media engagements um i don't know what to do with media engagements i just kind of threw it in there it it's the thing that none of us seem to have really wanted and it seems like they put a lot of time and energy into it and it's sad that they put all of this time and energy into a thing that everybody seems to hate um so there's that the other interesting thing that i did key in on was full page art you know when you have it you know basically now in the newest general's handbooks this is basically just like your chapter breaks this is like you know your uh border between open play and narrative play and then narrative play to open play or a narrative play to match play rather um you just kind of have like two pages of like you know here is you know kind of like a, a title card so to speak and that's about it um in the first general's handbook though they had 24 pages of full page art and that's including these section breaks but there were a whole bunch of just art pieces that were included in that general's handbook which i thought was really interesting that the the attitude about the general's handbook definitely seems to have changed um it seems like the hobby aspect of it like that all of like the art is just not part of the general's handbook so much anymore we just don't have as many pictures it's more content and this last piece I thought was really interesting this is a look at what we have for battle plans um and this was a real eye-opener to me so our number of battle plans that we've had per general's handbook has been surprisingly consistent three out of five were 26 battle plans and then we had uh, 2018 had 20 and 2019 had 22 um, and over these we've had varying splits between open narrative match play and meeting engagements um, the really interesting thing to me when we add this up like we have 120 total battle plans out of that 48 just under half are match play battle plans but a lot of those are actually just slightly changed versions of previous ones so that number is effectively a lot smaller and then we have 12 meeting engagement battle plans, 25 open play and battle plans, and 35 narrative play battle plans. And those things seem to just not get played. Um, I don't really see too many people really engaging in those things. And the really fun thing is that in the most recent three general's handbooks we got open war tables we also have the open war card deck i'm not sure if it's available anymore uh and i didn't check to see if there uh, that was redundant with the tables at all but just doing the quick math on the tables um each of the sets of tables are different so you know you can kind of roll a d3 and decide which year you're going to pull tables from and your total different scenario combinations comes up to 46,656 different possibilities. You will never play the same game of Age of Sigmar twice if you play Open War. That is really fascinating to me. The, my big takeaway from this is why are we all playing the same 12 battle plans over and over again? It seems like this really consistent thing that those are like all we really care about but i've had so many fun games where we were using 
some other battle plan. Whether it was from open war or stuff that was uh, created specifically for a league. Um, there's a lot of interesting options out there. And a lot of folks are not really jumping on that opportunity. And I think that's something that people really need to explore. There's a lot of content out there in the General's Handbook that people are not taking advantage of. You know, just looking at the page numbers, a lot of players are basically missing out on half of the game. At least half of the game. They're just playing match play. So much of the match play section is just the bloody points. It, like, that's... There's so much more to this game than match play. And we're all so focused on it. There's so many different battle plans that we can play. We have this insane set of open war tables that we can play from. There's just so, so many different things that we can do. You know, I think Anvil of Apotheosis really grabbed my attention, and that was, like, the thing that made me go, huh, I wonder what else I'm missing from the narrative and open play sections of these General's Handbooks. And I started digging into it, and here we are. So hopefully you all learned something. I know I did. As always, smash that like button and subscribe. It's real easy to do. Just kind of move your cursor down a little bit, as Vince likes to say. Click that button. Turn on your notifications so you get alerts when we post new videos. And, of course, if you like us, support us on Patreon. I'll talk to you all later.